proudly we hail... Here's another program with a cast of outstanding players. Public service time has been made available by this station to bring you this story as proudly we hail the United States Army. Our story today is entitled The Four-Footed Radar. This is the story of a combat team, of Corporal Jeff Meadows, dog handler, and Mike, the scout dog, both members of the Fighting Eighth Army in Korea. Our first act curtain is just about to rise, but before it does, I want to talk to all you young gals listening in. Say, tell me, gals, are you tired of the same old office routine? Well, okay, now you can get away from it all. Join the Women's Army Corps. You can travel all over the world, meet new friends, see new places. That's right. In the Women's Army Corps, you can travel and escape from the humdrum routine of your present life. Visit exciting places in your country and abroad. Make new friends among young men and women all over the world. And you'll have plenty of leisure time to enjoy your travels, too. You get a 30-day paid vacation each year, plus many, many weekend passes and, of course, the holidays. So why don't you join the WAC? You just visit your local United States Army recruiting station. Remember, you'll enjoy life more in the Women's Army Corps. And now your United States Army presents the proudly we held production, The Four-Footed Radar. Hi, I'm Jeff Meadows, uh, Corporal Jeff Meadows as of last week. I'm one half of an Army combat team, 6 feet 1, 180 pounds, 26 years old if you're interested in statistics. My partner is 26 inches tall, weighs about 80 pounds, and is 3 years old. His name's Mike. He sounds a little on the small side to be in the Army, but he's just about right for the line of work he's in. You see, Mike is a scout dog. Come on, I'll take you over and introduce you to the old man himself. That's his kennel on the end there. We have to build them up off the ground that way. These Korean winters get pretty chilly. Now, here we are. Not very fancy, but Mike calls it home. Hey, Mike! Come on out, boy, come on! Hey, you can't stay in that sack all day! Hey. Okay, okay, okay. Look, Mike. Hey, we got company. <laughs> this is a friend, friend. It's okay, Mike. Sorry, we uh, train him to be one man dog. It's okay now, though. Go ahead, pet him. As long as I'm here and he knows you're a friend, it's all right. Now sit, Mike. That a boy. I guess you're wondering if these dogs are as good as they say. Well, Mike has spotted enemy troops for us three, four hundred yards away with the right sort of breeze. Of course, it took a lot of training to reach that point. I'll never forget the day Mike and I got together. It was in the winter of 1951, back at Camp Carson. It gets pretty cold in Colorado, too. But I remember it was warm inside the orientation hall where we got our first briefing. Good morning, men. I'm Sergeant Owen. Now, you'll be seeing a lot of me the next few weeks. We're going to train some dogs together. And in every phase of that training, I'm going to be breathing down your neck. We got plenty to do. You men will be trained right along with your dog. We start out early tomorrow morning. So get a good night's rest. You'll need it. Because from here on in, you're going to be teachers and students at the same time. Good luck to all of them. Oh, he wasn't kidding either. First thing after early, and I do mean early breakfast the next day, we went down to have our dogs assigned to us. Meadows? Jeff Meadows? Yeah, here, Sarge. Oh, this one's Mike. You'll find his serial number tattooed inside his left flank. Write it down and memorize it. Right, Todd. Hey, hi there, Mike boy. How's your boy, huh? Oh, you like that, huh? Hey, hey, wait a minute. Mike, I already washed my face once this morning. Hey. Well, Mike boy, we got a lot to learn, huh? But we start off even. I never trained a dog, and you never trained a man. I didn't know how right I was when I said we had a lot to learn. First, there was three weeks of basic training. 
Mike learned his most important single lesson in those three weeks, obedience. Now today, we start teaching the dogs to heal. By that, I mean to walk to your left and a little behind you, so that his head is even with your left knee. Now, the voice command is heal, together with a pull on the leash to show him what you want. Now, you walk in a circle to your left. You ready? Go. Okay, now, my boy. You heard the side. Heal. Heal. Hey, that's better. No, no, not too fast. Mike. That's it. Heal. It wasn't all this canine close order drill, though. There were realistic battle indoctrination courses, like, for instance, the infiltration course. You and your dog crawl on your belly, and a curtain of live machine gun bullets makes a nasty snapping sound just above your head. A dog's hearing is much keener than a man, so the noise is just that much worse for him. No, Mike. No, Mike. Careful, boy. Careful. Stay down, boy. Down. Now crawl. Come on. Get up, boy. Some of the dogs couldn't take the noise and confusion. They were weeded out on the spot for non-combat type duty. But Mike made it without any trouble. We were really beginning to work as a team. When basic training was over, the names of the dogs assigned for different types of duty came out. Sentry dogs, messenger dogs. Mike's name was on the list marked Scout Dog. Okay, men, let's settle down now. All right, now. Every man in this group is handler of a dog that's been qualified for scout dog training. Now, that means 12 solid weeks of hard work. The dogs have shown a talent for the work, but they can't do it until they're trained to do it. So it's going to put some sweat on you fellas. Now, as you know, scout dogs are chosen for alertness, obedience, and their sense of smell and hearing. We're going to polish those senses until they can spot a strange man by smell alone at 300 yards. Well, that's just part of it. He's also got to tell you his handler where that man is. Now, that means you'll have to learn to understand what the dog is saying. We call it reading the dog. And you'll learn it before we're through. A lot of lives may depend on it someday, including your own. It was work, all right. We trained in teams, starting with the simplest problems for the dog. Okay, Powers. You go over to that clump of bushes and stay still. I'll muffle Mike's eyes and ears so you get set. Okay, Jeff. Yeah, there, that's the one. Now, wait a minute. I can still see your foot. Pull it in. Okay. Okay, now, my boy. You ready? Search. Search, Mike. Attaboy. Attaboy, you're getting warm. Good boy, Mike. No, no part. Mike! Good dog. Each time Mike found the hidden decoy, he was praised and petted. He learned to associate finding the decoy with prey, and he began to enjoy the work. He'd get all excited like a bird dog on a hunt. Only he had to do his hunting in absolute silence, and he had to keep telling me what was going on each step of the way. And believe me, anybody says a dog can't talk. <laughs> Never worked with a scout dog. Yep, we still had things to learn, Mike and I, but we learned them, and we learned as a team. He sharpened his sense of smell, and I sharpened my reading eye. I got so that the set of his shoulder could be like a sign that read, careful, they passed this way. Or that the lift of his head was like a voice saying, there they are, 200 yards to the right front. Yeah. You can learn to read a dog that close. And at distances up to 500 yards with the right kind of breeze. And you learn it well, too. Because you know they don't allow you but one mistake when you put what you've learned here into practice in one of those Korean ballets. Yeah, we sure had a time back in the early days, didn't we, Mike? <laughs> yeah, it keeps surprising you how these dogs understand, huh? Now, Mike will whine like he just did when we were playing off duty. But put his patrol harness on him and you couldn't get a peep out of him. It has to be that way, too. On night patrol, you can be quiet or dead. Take your pick. You know, it's funny to anyone who knows the dogs that anybody could lack confidence in them. But you do run across people that have to be shown. The first one I ran into like that was on a real tricky patrol, our first. We got a call for a scout dog team from an outfit up in the Big Dipper sector. I know we were next in line for a mission, but it always feels a little funny, starting out for the night. 
We went by jeep. We arrived at the company area in one piece, a little before chow time. Well, it's as far as I go, bud. Grand post over there. Right. Come on, Mike. Come on. Yeah, thanks for the ride. That's a nice roller coaster you've got there. <laughs> so long. <laughs> so long. Is this the Charlie Company CP? Right. You're the dog team for the 26th. Right? Yeah. Glad to see you. My name's Green, First Sergeant. Hi, Sergeant. My name's Meadows, and this is Mike. Uh, take a seat. The leader of the patrol you're going out with will be here in a minute. Meantime, maybe you want to know something about your mission for tonight. I'd appreciate it, believe me. First time out? Well, you're in good company. You're going with a hand-picked patrol, but we got sort of a special deal. What's the story, Sarge? Well, we've been having trouble with Chinese ambushes this last month or so. A couple of times, patrols have walked right into a ring of fire and taken a beating. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's some kind of buildup going on across the valley. We want to know about it. So tonight you lead a patrol to try to... Oh, oh this will be Pike now. Sergeant Jim Pike, he'll lead the patrol. I'll see you in a minute, Oliver. Go on down and get the rest of the men shaped up. Oh, good enough. They'll be standing tall tonight. Hey, Green, where's that bird dog escort? This is Corporal Meadows here. The dog there is named Mike. Mike? Yeah, how are you making out? Hold it, Mike, hold it. He doesn't know you. Just a minute. Sit, Mike, sit. Now, look, this man's friend. Friend Mike. Yeah, that's okay now. You can pet him if you want uh-huh, that's all right. As long as he knows his business, he doesn't have to be a lap dog. Well, we only got a few hours before we jump off. Suppose we go down and get acquainted with the men, huh? A good idea, Sarge. Between now and tonight, Mike's got a lot of memorizing to do. Well, he's got to memorize the scent of every man in the patrol. I got to see. Well, stick around, Sarge. You'll see a lot more than that. Okay, my boy. Let's go. Heel. <laughs> listening to the proudly we held production the four-footed radar and we will return for the second act after i ask this question you know i bet if i could ask each individual person listening in what he or she really wanted out of life a great majority of the answers could be boiled down to just one word that one word is happiness well happiness is a lot of different things a lot of different people but basically i guess you might say that it's the achievement of your goal to be happy is to be successful in whatever you do and in today's highly world, training is the key to success. If you're a young man of service age, you can get free training worth thousands of dollars by enrolling now in your United States Army's new Reserve for You training program. Under this plan, you can enter the course of your choice and be trained in such interesting fields as x-ray operations, photography, automotive maintenance, and communications. In all, there are over 100 courses to choose from. So for complete information on how you can benefit from this program, you visit your local United States Army recruiting station. Remember, fellas, team up with the Army, and you team up with success. And now we present the second act of the proudly we held production, The Four-Footed Radar. <laughs> it took a little while to sink in. This time it was for real. It was funny feeling. We were going out with a picked group of men. And to put a little pressure on it. Well, on me. Mike didn't seem to mind very much. That afternoon, I left Mike to rest, and I went down with Sergeant Pike to get the orientation briefing on the mission for that night. Okay, come on, now, settle down. Let's get squared away here. Now, maybe you guys have heard that there's a little different type of business we're going on tonight. Yeah, I hear tell we're supposed to catch us a live Chinese. Now, they know we ain't got pet. <laughs> now, you can save that Tennessee sense of humor for later, Oliver. We got business. Oh, you're getting, getting mighty stuffy in your old age. Now, don't forget, I knew you when. Never mind, now. Well, go ahead and tell us. Nobody's stopping you. What about this Chinese soldier business? You heard? We're out to take a prisoner. The whole thing is going to be a little different. We take fewer men, more automatic weapons, more ammunition. And we take a scout dog team. Well, right. I'm going further. This is Corporal Meadows from 26th Scout Dog Platoon. Hi. Look, I know you've got a lot of questions, fellas. Well, when Sergeant Pike here is finished, feel free to ask anything you like. Okay, Sergeant. Right, thanks, Meadows. Ah, you guys didn't get the notion that the dog's going to do all the work around tonight. It's not trained to take prisoners. We still got to do that. We need a live, talking Chinese soldier, and head the biggest, surest place to find one is Ambush Alley. Oh, yeah, I know, I know. That's why they sent for the dog team. 
and made up a special patrol. Tonight, we'll see if we can ambush an ambush. Here's the way we'll go about it. Watching Pike, I felt better. He knew his business. I learned later that he had the men for this patrol himself. Most of them had been rangers or commandos in World War II. A bunch of real professionals. Mike and I were in good company, all right. Mentally, we had to be good, too. That night on the way down to the assembly area, Pike and I were alone. Yeah, hold up a second, Meadows. Huh? Yeah? Now, look, there's not a thing that gets personal about this. I never used a dog on patrol, and I don't like things I don't know about. But, I mean, I, I got these men to take out and bring back. I can't experiment. This, you see any sign? Any sign that this dog's not working right now, you... He'll take the tail of the column and we'll go on the way I know best. I didn't want to change my men because, well, I know the dog may be all you say. I just wanted us to understand each other, okay? But don't worry. Mike's trained for the job. He'll be all right. Okay. Let's get on down. They'll be waiting. It could have been a lot. Mike would have to be shown. When we got to the assembly area, he was all busy. This man didn't fool around. Okay, okay. Everybody check their equipment. I want you to use the buddy system. Stand on each side of you. That way every man gets double checked. Oliver, you make sure we got everything. Extra ammo, all that. And every man will pet this dog one at a time. Get him used to your smell. No hurry, we got it. Oh, yeah. Get some black on your faces. It's going to be a moon. Okay, Meadows. We went around, Mike and I. And by the time we were ready to move up, Mike the tent of every man in the patrol filed away for refuge. From here on in, if it didn't match up with one of those familiar scents, would be the enemy. Time to earn your money. Move single file through the barbed wire. Engineers got tapes laid out for us to follow through our minefield. I'll take the point till we get past the line and team on the rear. If you got any questions, ask them now. Hey, move. We stepped off into the black. A little nervous. Mike was excited, eager. Just another field problem to him. We followed the dim line of the engineer's tape, which kept us from stepping on sudden death. Then on the far side, our car... The engineers were already starting to take up the tape behind us. It was time for Mike to just... I was glad when the moon slipped behind a layer of clouds. The dark of the... Because we didn't need to see much. We had Mike's nose and eyes to follow. Okay, Sarge. I guess we're ready. You remember the route? Oliver, pass the word back. Stay in contact. Right. Pike says no, but stay close. Pass it back. Now we're really in it. This is what all the training was for. A patrol that means business. And the only thing between us and the Chinese ambush knows of that big gray shadow moving in front of me, sending me a message along his heart. A message that says nothing yet. Nothing yet. The moon stays hidden. Ground conditions are good. And there's a slight moving toward it. Couldn't ask for anything better. With Mike leading, we run farther than a patrol ordinarily could in the dark. And that's the trouble. What is it? Listen, we're nearly a mile past the place where we should have spotted something I don't like. And then he said, or Mike would have picked it up. And the wind's in our favor. There's no chance he... If he had, we'd have been ambushed before this. Yeah, that's right, too. Want to try doubling back? No. No, we came after a prisoner. Moving in, the wind shifts and the pressure mounts. Another few... Creeping feeling at the back of my neck. There hasn't been a night bird... ...in minutes. Then as the wind comes around again, Mike stiffens with excitement. Hold it, Sarge! What's up? Your Chinese are up ahead. A little over a hundred yards, the way the wind is. You sure about this now? Straddling the draw up there. I'd suggest we move around to the right, get our own ambush according to your plan. All right, we'll try it, but you better be right. I'm the guy on the point with no weapon, remember? Even more silently now. A handful of men following the keen nose and... Doubts begin to come. Suppose I was wrong. Hundred different possibilities of disaster in half a minute. But you go on. Hey, hold it a second. I can't see him. Me neither. 
But this is as close as we dare go until we do. We're there. I still don't see it. Okay, Meadows, the dog hit it right on the nose. Oh. What you say on Cupcake? On that pet you were talking about, Nancy. What's your story? See that clump of bushes at the bridge line? I see it. Well, right next to it, you'll find a Chinese... Look around when the moon came out a minute ago. Now, he'd ought to know better than that. We got that strangle cord. Swim? Okay, I'll cover you. This looks like an awful lot to ask. There were maybe 30 Chinese up there. And he was going to bring back their... Without the rest hearing anything. There was no sound. No movement. It was as if Oliver had gone underground. For minutes, it seemed like out. Third. Then suddenly, Mike started... He was telling me that there was a strange scent within a few yards of it. And... Quiet. Chinese moving in to our front there. Mike picked up the scent. Okay. Mike's carbine barrel came... Mike's excitement said the enemy scent was getting close. Too close. Southern drawl came out of the darkness not ten feet away. I got him. Give me a hand. He's heavy. He's fine. He'll have a sore throat in the morning. Hey, listen. We got to get... What's up? This guy was their listening post. He had a field phone with him. When he doesn't check... We can find him. Uh, well, we've come beyond that map route. And we'll have to risk going around the other side. Meadows. Here, Sarge. Yeah, we've got to go back by way with... I'll take the point again, huh? That way we get a warning before we walk in. Now, let's move. We moved out, heading across the ravine, back toward our own. But quiet. Then when we'd gotten maybe a hundred yards down the valley. All right, they've missed that. They don't know where we are. Oliver, take Martin, put a couple of BARs on our back trail. If they follow... They'll catch up to us. we got to get out of this gully under the flat ground. I got you. Come on. The main body of us took off for the end of the ravine where we'd find a fairly open air. It was much better than being bottled up in the ravine like fish in a rain barrel. That's Oliver and Martin. Doesn't sound like much of a fight. Sounds like only... What do we do now, sir? We hold here and wait for him to catch up. You can answer in English. It's okay, Cupcake. Hold your fire. Oh. I don't like it. It's, this setup is too good, you know that. It don't smell right. What? We open fire. They they stopped right where they were. Well, that's why I set you there. Was... They stopped too easy. Yeah, maybe it didn't sound. It was like they just wanted to see where we were, and they didn't push it. They followed, but just to locate us. They got a field for They aren't calling home right now for a motor barrage to be dropped in here on us. Oh, Mama. Hold off, just because we got a prison. Now, don't stand around. We got to try to get out from under. I knew Pike had to be right. Any minute the sky. But if we could get out of the area before the barrage began, we might be okay. Out and moving, my hopes went up. Something was holding up their fire. I known it was too good to be true. Hey, Pike. Hold it up, Meadows. What is it? We, uh, we got some new trouble, Cupcake. I just figured out what's holding up that mortar. They can afford to wait. Come on, make sense, will I you? I just recognize this place. Those two hills. They came out this way a couple of nights ago. That Chinese minefield stuff. So now we're on the Chinese side of the minefield. How are we going to get back? Stopped her at home. Oh, those dirty. They work meadows. They hold their barrage waiting for us to step into that minefield. When they hear the explosion, they trap. Then they start dropping in the mortar. I don't believe I like the word. Sarge, it's just a bare chance, but I've got an idea. Well, we sure got nothing at all to lose. Let's hear it. Look, give me five minutes to scout with Mike. You form the patrol file. We may have an out. Okay, I'm game, but hurry, will you? They won't wait forever, even for their little... Mike and I moved toward the hills. We're out of it, quartering back and forth, searching, hoping we wouldn't step into the mind area before we could find... And luck was with us. Mike gave an alert, a ground set. We took off. Sergeant Pike. Here, here, over here. We can move. 
Mike found an enemy ground scent that leads into their minefield. It's cold, probably from last night sometime, but it's clear enough. It means an enemy patrol went safely through there into our territory and back again. And the dog follows the Chinese trail and we follow the dog. That the idea? That's it. It's all up to Mike. That's good enough for me. He hasn't been wrong yet. I hope our little friends back there don't hold their breath waiting for us to trigger that trap for them. Well, I don't know. I hope they do myself. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's don't stick around and find out. Oliver, you and the prisoner stick close on me going through, right? Yeah, right behind you, Captain. Okay, let's move it out. Hey, uh, Meadows. Yes, Arch? Listen, uh, you think the dog, uh, might think he'd go for canned chicken? Canned chicken? Yeah, I just happen to have a can. Well, you know, I got a package from home. And... Yeah, sure, Sarge, sure. Now, it's not exactly his regulation diet, but uh, I'll overlook that if you throw in a cup of hot coffee. Meadows, you got yourself a deal. <laughs> yeah, you hear what the man said, Mike? Ciao. Come on, let's go, boy. Let's go home. <laughs> I've always found it to be true that a man with a good eye to the future makes a good soldier. And that's why so many bright young men and women are joining the United States Army now. For Army life is an exciting career and there's plenty of room up at the top. Today, American soldiers get the finest technical training in the world. Every man is a specialist, a master at his job. And the Army sees to it that every man is trained to do his job and what's more important, do his job right. Because the Army is growing so rapidly... Today's soldiers are being promoted fast. Oh, you work hard, sure, but, well, believe me, the rewards are really well worth it. Right now, the Army needs healthy, intelligent men and women, volunteers from 18 to 34. So if you've got what it takes, then you think seriously about an Army career. Stop in at your nearest United States Army recruiting station today. Get all the facts about what the Army has to offer you. been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented transcribed in cooperation with this radio station. Proudly We Hail is produced by the Recruiting Publicity Center for the United States Army, and this is Richard Hayes speaking, inviting you to tune in to the same station next week for another interesting story on Proudly We Hail. <laughs>